This is a tutorial video on sound waves. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the following topics. We're going to be looking at the properties of sound waves. We're going to be looking at how sound waves travel. We're going to be looking at the speed of sound waves and using the wave equation for calculations. And we're going to look at how we hear sound waves. Um, throughout the video, while you're watching, remember to use the pause button if you need to. You can always go back and listen to something again if it hasn't fully made sense. I want you to write summary notes and bring any questions you have to the next lesson. So properties of a sound wave, the first thing I want you to do, pause the video and try and draw a longitudinal wave and a transverse wave and put as many labels on as you can. Okay, so that's the first thing. Once you've done that, you can press play. Now, hopefully, your diagram of a longitudinal wave looks a little bit like this. There's two versions of it here, this one and this one. So this is the side view of a slinky with a longitudinal wave, and this is a plan view from above. In our longitudinal wave, we've got this point here and this point here oscillating backwards and forwards, and this is the direction of energy travel. And remember that in a longitudinal wave, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy travel. And sound wave is a longitudinal wave. So um, the medium that it's traveling through is oscillating in this orientation, and this would be the direction of energy travel. Now, sound waves are just oscillations, um, are just vibrations traveling through a medium, and that medium can vary, um, and that has different effects on the wave. But sound waves, like all waves, can be reflected, they can be refracted, and they can be diffracted. And we observe these processes taking place with sound waves all the time. We might just not realise it. So, for example, if we hear an echo, that is a sound wave being reflected. If um, late at night you can hear um, music from a party travelling from far away, that is, is sound waves being refracted. And if you can hear a conversation around a corner or a doorway, but you can't see the person having that conversation. That is sound waves being diffracted. So just like with all other waves, we can reflect, we can refract, we can diffract. So they still do the things that other waves do. Okay, we've got um, lots to talk about on this slide, so let's go through it bit by bit. First of all, I've got these graph traces here, okay? And these are graph traces from an oscilloscope screen. Here's the word oscilloscope. Okay. An oscilloscope is a piece of equipment that um, displays electrical signals. And you could essentially think of this as a graph here that is showing um, voltage, which gives you an indication of amplitude and time on the x-axis here. So even though we've got a longitudinal sound wave, the trace for that wave here um, looks like a transverse wave, but it's not. It's just the trace. It's just showing how the amplitude is varying with time. So this isn't the wavelength. This is the period of the wave, capital T. And remember, we've got this relationship here between frequency and period. The frequency of the wave is equal to one over the time period. They are the reciprocal of one another. Okay, so please don't measure this and think it's the wavelength. It is the period because this is an oscilloscope trace. Brilliant. Now, let's have a little look at what these traces are showing. This trace here is for a loud and high-pitched sound. This is for a loud and low-pitched sound. So let's compare these two. They're both loud. This one's high-pitched. This one's low-pitched. If we look at what's going on with the time period here, we can say if we've got a low pitch, there's a longer time period compared to here. If we, you can uh, do it by counting up the squares. So higher pitch sounds have got smaller periods, lower pitch sounds have got longer periods. If we use this equation here, that means that high pitch sounds have high frequencies and low pitch sounds have low frequencies. If we now have a little look at this wave here, this is a quiet high pitch sound. Um, and it's saying it's a bit higher pitch than A up here. So what's changed between this wave here and this wave here is it's gone from loud to quiet. Well, it's the amplitude of the wave. So if you imagine your undisturbed position line running through here and you look at the amplitude there, 
compared to the undisturbed line position running through here and you look at the amplitude there. The quiet sound has got a smaller amplitude and the loud sound has got a larger amplitude. And what this is showing us, we've got it summarised down here, the frequency of the sound wave determines the pitch of the sound. Higher frequency means a higher pitch sound and the amplitude of the sound wave determines the volume of the sound. So let's now have a look at how sound waves travel. Um, in this scenario here, we've got a guitar and we pluck the strings, the strings vibrate and that's where the vibrations are coming from that are gonna travel through the air. The vibrations travel through the air and I'll press play in just a moment and then travel to the ear. Now, when I press play, I want you to have a little look about what's going on here and link it back to that idea we had about the longitudinal waves. So you can see if you take a little particle here, it's oscillating backwards and forwards. This is the direction of energy travel. Okay, so they're oscillating backwards and forwards. This is the direction of the energy travel. Now the next thing I want you to have a think about is what if we change something about the material that the vibrations are passing through. So for example, what if we changed the material from being a gas to being a liquid or being a solid? Now one thing that you can try at home, you can do this with either a metal hanger or maybe a metal spoon. Tie two bits of string to it. And then what you're gonna do, wrap the string around your fingers, bang the metal hanger or the metal spoon against something so that you hear it ding and then do it again but the next time with the string still wrapped around them put your fingers in your ears and listen to the sound made by the vibrations of the spoon or the hanger and have a think about why that's happening try and link it back to whether it's a solid a liquid or a gas look at the arrangements of the particles in the solid and in the liquid and in the gas what implication is that going to have for how easy it is to pass on the vibrations from one set of particles to the next ones. Having chatted about that, what I'd like you to do now is have a look at these four diagrams. They are diagrams showing models of how sound waves move through air. And I want you to have a really careful think about, based on your understanding, which one you think is the best model for how sound waves move. And I want you to bring your choice to the next lesson. So if we have a little look here, this cone in all four diagrams is a speaker and it's going to vibrate backwards and forwards like this when the um, speaker is on and music or sound is coming out of the speaker. Uh, in model A, you've got the speaker um, knocking sort of a almost like a ball on a string here and the vibrations being passed on and they get passed along this way. In B, we've got this idea that there's a wave and there's almost something sort of falling up and down the wave, traveling along. In option C, we've got essentially like a gas or air being pushed out by the speaker. And in D, we've got um, this sort of, uh, it's marked by this yellow dot here. But essentially you've got something being passed on by the um, these balls uh, vibrating and oscillating into one another. So the oscillations are passing something on. So have a little think about which of those models you think best represents how you understand that sound waves move through air. And I want you to be able or be prepared to discuss that in our next lesson. And we'll talk about which one works best. Right, our next job is to look at the speed of sound waves. So as a general value, the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, okay? You don't have to memorize that number, but it is useful to have it in mind and recognize it so that you can see if you're doing calculations whether a speed looks sort of as though it's the right size or magnitude. It's worth bearing in mind that the speed of sound changes in air depending on the air's temperature, on air pressure and other factors as well. So it's not a fixed value, but it is roughly of the order of 340 meters per second. We are now gonna look at using the wave equation here to solve some questions. So we have got, here's our wave equation. 
V stands for the velocity of the wave, the speed of the wave. So if we're doing questions about sound, that's going to be 340 meters per second. Um, lambda here is the wavelength of the wave, which needs to be measured in meters. And F is the frequency of the wave, which needs to be measured in hertz. And if you've got any prefixes in here, in the values you're given, you need to change those before you put them into the equation. Remember, we've also got our equation for frequency that we saw earlier. The frequency of the wave is equal to 1 over the period, and the period would be in seconds. Right, let's try a practice question using that equation. Here's our, here's our question. What is the wavelength of a sound wave travelling at 340 metres per second with a frequency of 980 hertz? So first of all, we'll write down our knowns and unknowns. V is equal to 340 metres per second. F is equal to 900 and 80 hertz, and we want to find the wavelength lambda, knowns and unknowns. Next I'm going to write down which equation I want to use. I'm going to use f v equals f lambda, but I need to rearrange it to make lambda the subject of the equation. So I'm going to get v divided by f equals lambda, like that. I'm now going to put these values um, over here into the equation. So I'm going to get lambda equals 340 divided by 980. And that means that I get lambda equals 0.34 meters. So it's going to be about 34 centimeters. And that sounds about right. Um, sound waves, we're looking at wavelengths sort of, of around about a metre or a bit less in that sort of order of magnitude, so that's great. Okay, so next we're going to look at um, how our ear hears sound waves, or how we hear sound waves, and how, what's going on in different stages of the ear. So we've got this diagram to help us. We're going to follow through the numbered points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and see what's going on. So first of all, the sound waves are collected by the earlobe, which is also known as the pinna. Um, so the sound waves, the vibrations being passed along the um, air particles, go into the ear here. And there's some quite interesting experiments I've seen where you can put wax in the pinna, so it's a different shape. And then you can see um, how it changes your hearing, and it has quite a big impact on it. So the pinna is actually quite a, a good, plays a really important role here. So the sound waves are collected by the pinna and then they travel along the ear canal here. Okay, Number two, they travel along the ear canal until they reach this part here, which is the eardrum. So all the way along here, we've got air particles vibrating, passing on the oscillations until they get to the eardrum. And the oscillations of the air particles make the eardrum vibrate. Okay, Really, really important that vibrations are passed onto the eardrum here. Now... On the other side of this eardrum, so this is like your your um, your outer and your middle ear, and this is your inner ear here. So this is essentially all now sealed off from the other side. Um, and then in here, you have got your ossicles, or your small bones. There's three of them, um, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And they've got a really important job. These small bones amplify the vibrations. So we might have had really small amplitude vibrations here. And the job of these bones is to amplify those vibrations. And you can um, have a look at how these small bones, these ossicles, vary in size in different animals. It's quite an interesting, um, interesting thing to look at. Now, uh, once these ossicles have amplified the vibrations, they then strike the cochlea. So these are essentially moving and they strike the cochlea. This is the cochlea here. And it essentially, there's um, almost a bit like a, a message that goes along here, an electrical signal. And the job of the cochlea is to turn this mechanical vibration into an electrical signal. Okay, So the cochlea is changing a mechanical vibration into an electrical signal. And then it whizzes off along here. These are the auditory nerves. 
and they go off to the brain. So the cochlea turns the mechanical vibration of the ossicles into an electrical signal and the electrical signal is then sent along the auditory nerve to the brain where it's then interpreted as a sound. So a couple of other points about um, human hearing. Um, really important point to remember is that the normal range of human hearing is between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Um, the range of human hearing varies with age, so as you get older that range decreases slightly. Um, but important to remember 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and other animals can hear different ranges. Um, we're just going to go over just to confirm what's going on in our ears, like some really important points. Our ears detect sound by converting vibrations in the air into mechanical vibrations in a solid. The compressions and rarefactions in the air set the eardrum in motion. As the eardrum vibrates backwards and forwards, small bones are made to vibrate. These bones are connected to nerves. This process only works over a limited range of frequencies, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, um, and that's determined by the bone size. So if we change the size of the bones, we change the range of frequencies we can hear. So think about cats and dogs that can hear much higher frequencies. Think about what um, size bones they have. It's, it's really, really interesting to look into a little bit more. So humans can only hear in the range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz because of the size of the ossicle bones that we have. Okay, so that's our tutorial on sound waves. We've gone over properties of sound waves, the key properties. We've looked at how they travel. We've looked at the speed of sound waves and we've done a practice question using a wave equation. And we have looked at how we hear sound waves um, and how those vibrations in the air are turned into electrical signals in our brain. Uh, make sure that you've uh, written down any summary notes and that you bring any questions you have to the next lesson. Thank you.